do do nothing to see here, just my workshop. Let's take this down. Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. If you've been following along my workshop makeover series, you guys saw me organize all of my wood, build a workbench, and also put together everything that you see in the background. And today is finally the day where I put it all together. We have one last area to work on, if you couldn't already tell by this little wall right here that's not painted. This basement workshop has come a long way and I'm so glad that you guys have been enjoying the series so far. I have a bunch of different DIYs that I want to get done in this video. And before we get started, I want to thank Brooke Lennon for sponsoring today's video. I'll talk a little bit more about them later on. And also, if you have been following along and are not subscribed to my channel, make sure to click on that little button right there just so that you don't miss out on any new videos. And with that, let's get this makeover started and finish this workshop. I quickly wanted to show you an overview of the workshop in case you missed it. But over here is basically wood storage and then I'm going to have a workbench right there. Currently, everything is all over the place just because I've been working on projects, but that is the whole point of this workshop. Since this area is not that large, I've put everything on wheels so I can move things around really easily, and that's been working really well for me. So I would definitely recommend putting wheels on everything if you're building out a workshop. I still love my workbench so much, and I can't wait to put it over there. But before we do, we have to address this area. I don't know what's really going on here, but yes, storage solutions are needed. Let me just move this out of the way. Okay. So here's the last area that I need to get done. Right now I have an old bookshelf that I got in college. I stole it from my parents' house because we literally had no storage in this house, but now we have to say goodbye to it. So I'm going to put that somewhere else. And then this originally was not supposed to be here. It's supposed to be in my storage room as well. But of course I filled it up with DIY supplies. So this is gonna get a major makeover and that way we can make everything cohesive with the beautiful backdrop that I've already created. We're gonna be completing this area and adding shelves over here. You guys voted on my YouTube and also on Instagram and all said that shelves would look amazing here, which I totally agree. So that is what we're adding. And as you can see, my tools are kind of just everywhere. So I want to get them hung up on this side of the wall so that they're not in every single shot whenever I'm filming videos. That is the game plan. And before we can get any of it done, we of course need to paint the walls and finish up what I started over here. That's not loud. <laughs> what is that? Oh, a chopstick. <laughs> the best DIY tool. <laughs> Why did I have that down here? Paint, 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 paint. Oh my God, spiders. Ew. What's so funny is I literally cleaned this like a couple months ago. I cleaned this a couple months ago. Let's hear that one more time. Guys, we are like 95% of the way done of painting over these gray walls in the house. If you can't already tell, I just absolutely hated this color. Especially being in a basement where we get no natural lighting, this dreary paint color just had to go. Okay, you know what I don't understand? Brian wears that same blue shirt every time we paint. And I don't think there's even a speck of paint on your shirt. Professional. And then there's me, covered in paint. You know why? It's because you only roll. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm just really good. Mm. False. There are still a few spots in the house that need to be painted over, but this workshop is one of the last and I am rejoicing. Don't mind this over here. It's just new furniture for the basement makeover. Oh my God, I'm so excited. But what I'm really here to show you is this bookcase. If you guys remember, it did not quite fit into my reading nook. So I'm going to use it in my workshop instead. And of course we can't leave it like this. I want to give it a little bit of a makeover. So let me clear this out and get the project going. I'm planning to put it right here and I want this to be all paint storage basically and then put a pegboard over here and over here i want to put a chalkboard so that way i can write down ideas and this will be kind of a little command center and of course we can't just leave the bookcase like this i think i want to add a little bit of an arch right here add some customization that way it kind of ties in with the arches over here and then the pin board it's gonna look so cute especially since i'm going to paint this to match the rest of the cabinets over here 
I'm gonna cut out the MDF to the same size as that first shelf just so that I could visualize what the arch cutout is going to look like. From there, I found the halfway mark of the width and then from there, I'm going to measure the height and then use that to create the center mark for my DIY compass. At this point, I've used it in every part of my workshop makeover so far, but essentially it is a piece of wood with a hole on top for my pencil and then a hole in the center to place a nail or a screw. It's super easy to make and gives me the most perfect arch every single time, so I love using this thing. And now that it's all mapped out, I'm going to go turtle speed with my jigsaw to cut this out as carefully as I can. And since we're cutting out a curve, don't forget to use a scroll blade. Let's see if this fits. It's perfect, you guys. Okay, cool. Also, are we even surprised that I'm making an arch bookcase? Even though arches have been really trendy lately, I still think it is a classic style. It does a really good job of breaking through all of these hard corners that we have going on with our furniture. It just rounds everything out and adds balance to the space. Plus, I think it looks really cute. This is a project that I never would have thought that I would actually be able to do when we first moved into this house. I can't believe how much I've learned in less than two years of using power tools. And now I have my own workshop. This is a total dream and it's all thanks to you guys. So thank you for supporting and watching every week. I honestly cannot thank you guys enough. I've used this color a couple of times now and I'm still not tired of it. I absolutely love this color and a lot of you asked about the paint color. This is actually Bonsai Pot by Bear. It's just one of those colors that really shifts with the light so sometimes it looks a little bit warmer and sometimes it leans cooler and it really is a chameleon. I just consider it a neutral color at this point which makes it perfect for furniture while adding in a nice pop of color. I ended up doing two coats of the paint and then I made sure to follow up with a polyurethane and I chose a semi-gloss finish just to make it really easy to clean. Good morning, you guys. I hope you're ready for another day of DIYs because we are getting started bright and early today. I already got one thing checked off of my list today, which was to make my bed. I've been really good over the past couple of weeks of making my bed, and this is a good habit that I'm hoping to keep up. And the beautiful bedding that you see behind me is from Brooke Linen, who is today's video sponsor. And I think that having nice bedding helps you make your bed every day because you just want it to look its best. Making my bed has kind of become a form of self-care for me because it's just one thing that I can check off my list. I get a little bit of peace of mind and start off my day on the right foot. I know that high quality bedding can get really expensive, so Brook Linen has given you the comfort and the quality at an affordable price because they essentially cut out the middleman. They were founded on the philosophy that people deserve beautiful and simple home essentials without the luxury markup. They have a ton of colors they can choose and mix and match from. So as you can see behind me, I got the cream as well as the soft gray. I think it gives a really nice layering effect and I love how clean and crisp it feels. I am kind of picky when it comes to bedding so these are Tina approved and also Brian loves them so I think you guys will love them as well. I got the Lux Hardcore Sheet Bundle and they just feel so amazing. Instead of buying each item individually you can save 25% off by bundling which is exactly what I did. The Hardcore Bundle comes with the core sheet set, extra pillowcases, and a duvet cover. I would definitely recommend going that route so you can save some money plus they are giving you $20 off of any order over $100 with my code Tina. You can type that in when you check out or click on my link I'll have all that info in the description box. Okay, now that my room is in order, let's go downstairs and get my workshop in order. If you watched my last video, then this project is going to be super similar to that one, but this time I'm gonna make them a little bit wider at six inches, so this shelf is gonna be a little bit bigger. I think these are gonna look so good up on the wall, and it's also very easy and affordable to make, so I'm going to cut these down and then assemble. Originally, I actually planned to put three shelves onto the wall, but it just looked too crowded, so I ended up just using two of them and each one is going to be 30 inches in length. The construction of these are pretty simple so I'm taking the four inch board and this is going to be the back. We're going to add some pilot holes all along the back to screw into the side of our six inch board and of course I'm using some wood glue to make this really sturdy.
For the lip, we're gonna glue and brad nail the two inch board to the front of that six inch board. And that's all there is to these shelves. I just learned how to make these a week ago and now I just can't stop. These totally give off a floating shelf vibe and I just think they look amazing. This is totally a beginner friendly build. Plus they were really affordable to make. So with all the wet I bought, I spent $30 and I could have made three of these shelves. So I think that is amazing. And these are just gonna look so good in the workshop. It totally opens up the area and I'm so glad that you guys voted for these because I think they look incredible. It is finally time to put up the shelves. They look really good. I just marked off the studs on the wall. So now I'm going to drill some pilot holes over here, make some marks on the wall again, and then we can finally get these up. One up, one more to go. The shelves were definitely the move in here because look at how much it opens this whole area. I love that the wood matches perfectly with our countertops. I cannot wait to style these later, but for now I'm going to work on the next DIY. Let me go grab it really quickly. Here it is. So I've got this chalkboard panel from Home Depot and on the other side is actually a whiteboard panel. So originally I was going to make my own chalkboard, but then I decided I think a whiteboard is actually going to be a lot more useful in here, especially since I can erase it really easily. Although a chalkboard would be really fun because I love doing like chalk calligraphy on here. It looks so beautiful. I just think that a whiteboard would be a lot more helpful, especially when I'm planning out DIYs. So this is the side that I'm going with. Whiteboards can get a little bit pricey, especially if you want a really large one or if you need a custom size so this is a great option because you can cut it down to whatever size you need and then we're going to frame it so that it matches perfectly with the workshop we won't have any of those silver edges on whiteboards that you usually see which i'm totally not a fan of so i can't wait to work on this Using my circular saw, I'm going to cut this down to 30 inches to fit my space. The sheet that I got came in a 24 by 48, and I believe they come even larger, so you can definitely customize this however you want. But if you do plan on cutting it, make sure that you put some painter's tape on top. That way, you get less chips and a sharper line. Perfect! Wow, you actually get two pretty decent sized whiteboards slash chalkboards. Maybe I can turn this one into a chalkboard. So here's how it's looking. I have a bunch of trim that I have left over that would be perfect for this. I love that it's thinner so that it is a little bit more modern than what you'll probably see in stores. And also if the line that you cut out isn't perfect, this trim is also going to cover that and make it look super nice and finished. With some leftover wood trim, I'm going to use this to create the frame and I'm setting my miter saw to a 40 degree angle to make my miter cuts on all four pieces. So originally I was going to brand nail it to the board, but then I thought that I would avoid creating a bunch of holes, so I decided to glue it on. And here you'll see that I scratched up the whiteboard with some sandpaper. I'm doing this along the edge. The whiteboard is just super slippery, so I wanted to give our glue a little bit of something to grip onto. And with some construction adhesive, I put that on the trim and attached it to the board. Alternatively, you could use a router to create a rabbit fit so that the board fits perfectly inside, but I don't have a router, so this method will just have to do. This whiteboard is going to be the start of so many fun future projects and DIYs, and I cannot wait to start using it and brainstorming on it. We are going to bring you guys even more videos, and there is still a ton that I want to do in this house and possibly more projects outside of my house, so make sure you guys stay tuned. After clamping on the trim and letting that glue dry down, our whiteboard is ready to go. To hang this up, I added some D-rings to the back, so we're gonna add some pilot holes first and then screwing them into place. I do say so myself. 
myself. I am so excited to hang this up and we are almost done with the workshop. I just have a few more things to finish up today. First things first though, I need to get this arch up onto the bookcase and then we can get it in place. To attach it to the bookcase, I'm using some corner braces here. So I'm gonna add those to the top as well as the sides. This was the easiest way that I could think of to keep it in place and secure. But if you guys have any alternatives, let me know in the comments. I'm also making sure to put in pilot holes into the bookcase. And when we put it in place, you just wanna have it flush to the front. That way it blends in seamlessly. You know what's gonna make this look even better? Coke! Oh no. Make sure you clean it off before you start. Oh my god. No workshop is complete without some pegboards, so I grabbed these two from Ikea. I have them also in my DIY studio and I love them. They come in different colors, but I just went for white so that it would match the background. Once I get all my tools up, it's gonna add a bunch of color to this. So I'm just going to hang them both up and they fit perfectly right here on the wall. It honestly is a perfect fit. Taking a moment of appreciation for this project. I am so in love with it. Honestly, this is too pretty to be used for paint storage, but I love it so much. I'm kind of convinced that this is the best green for furniture, and I also love how well these knobs tied in. I already had these, so they worked perfectly with this. Everything is in place and ready to go, so I think that means we can finally style. It is time to get our workbench into place and into the center of the room as the star of the show. I've been waiting so long to do this, and I think it just looks so good in here. And I asked you guys on Instagram if I should make these shelves cute or functional, and I just decided to do a little bit of both so I added in a couple pieces of decor just so that there's some personality on the shelves and then I used the bottom shelf as storage for my drills which is perfect to grab and go. Onto the drawers, everything is finally getting a home. I can't even tell you guys how excited I am just to have a closed storage for all of my supplies and tools and all of the random bits and bobs like these Allen wrenches that just come with every piece of furniture. I finally have a place for those. And of course, I couldn't leave my new whiteboard naked, so I made a little sign to welcome you guys into the new workshop. I can already tell I'm gonna have a lot of fun doodling on this. The bookcase, aka the the new paint shelf is getting filled with paint and spray paints and this is going to be ready to go for any project that comes up next. It is time you guys. Let's take a trip down memory lane and look back at what this used to look like. It was completely in shambles. There was just wood everywhere. It was so disorganized and I literally had one fold-up table to work with and after clearing that out, building our own lumber storage, painting a mural and thrift flipping a workbench and building a backdrop for my future videos, I am so proud of how this workshop came out. So without further ado, here is the after.
do you guys think? I am so in love with this workshop. This was definitely a long time coming and it was so worth the wait. I love all the fun colors that are going on in the background. And now I have a place to think and work and come up with so many more DIY projects for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this whole makeover series, but there is a lot more to come. I already started working on my first project in here and it's actually with Home Depot, which is such a dream and you guys seriously have made it all happen. So thank you so much for continuing to watch and support. You guys are the absolute best and if you like the makeover don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below and again thank you to Brooklyn for sponsoring today's video you can use my code Tina at checkout and that will get you $20 off of any order over $100 that is all for today thank you so much for watching stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one bye